Greetings, I hope you're having a great day. I've been busy with my rubber stamp stamping out some designs. Let me just set these aside for a moment and I'll show you some of the things I've been stamping out. So I've got these stamped out and they're all ready to be cut out. I'm going to set some of these aside in a moment as well. What I'd like you to notice is that I'm using different paper colors. I'm working on cardstock, and that's important for this project. By the way, I'm calling this video Fun Dimensionals because we are working again with my dimensional stamps. I think you're going to love what we're doing. I've got some tips to share along the way, and here's the first one. This is a manila folder. Just a manila folder. And you can see I've stamped some designs out on it because it is a very good weight for what we're doing. So I use that. And the folders come in different colors. So another time I might stamp on red. Here's a tray full of pieces that I've stamped out and I've done some cutting on. And I'm going to bring another tray up because I want to show you a few things on that tray. This is just a tray full of supplies. And you can see I've got some triple thick, some Mod Podge, Lumiere paints. I use them in different colors. These little jars have glitter in them. Yeah, my E6000 glue, I love that. I've got some liquid pearls and some Skittles here. I've got a box with some gems and accents in it got some markers. I've got a paintbrush and a glue stick. And I'm going to show you how I use some of these things. I've even got a little folded piece of paper that if I'm working with the glitter, I'll pour it back off into this so I can get it back into the little bottle. These are very important. The foam dots and in another video I've talked about using some of the fun foam. You can use that as well. There's a lot of really nice products. I like to have a few specialty papers on hand. Some ribbon. And this is really interesting. I'm just going to pull it out and show you what I might do with this. So this is contact paper and it's clear. And this is another contact paper. You know, they've got the markers on the back and everything. And this is an opaque. What you can do when working on a project, if you want to make it more substantial or uh, so it doesn't get shop worn, too many fingers on a piece. And Believe me, people are going to want to put their fingers on these pieces. What I might do before I did any of the cutting would be to put a piece of the clear right over my design and then I would proceed on with the cutting of the piece. So I just wanted to mention that because I'll come back and show you a piece that I've done with the contact paper. So now I'm just going to show you some of the fun things we can make with my dimensional stamps. I'm going to slide this tray over a little bit so we can focus in the center here a little bit on the things we're going to be making. So I'm going to pull this paper over too because I think it's an, a nice background piece. So this is one of the pieces that I've already uh, stamped, obviously, uh, gold embossed and cut out and did the fussy cutting on. If I'm using a design like this, I want to show you what I can actually do with it and what I actually did do with it. I came in and I created this piece. Actually, I stamped this one out on red and it's a beautiful paper ornament. And then I've done some fancy work on it. I've used my markers. I've used a little bit of stickles. I think I said Skittles. I had a couple to eat, so I was thinking about those. But stickles, I used the stickles here. And a jewel. 
and it's really a pretty piece. I've got a couple of others that I'll show you. I thought this one was gorgeous. A friend made this and sent it to me and she did a lot of work with glitter on this piece. I think, yes, she used stickles in different places here. Very pretty and so pretty on my tree. Here's another. This is just a great design for making these paper ornaments. Uh, I did a little bit of painting here. The hearts, what I did first of all was colored them in with a marker. Then I took a little of my triple thick glaze on a brush and just painted in the heart and then sprinkled a little bit of glitter over it. I added uh, some jewels to the piece and it's, it turned out very pretty. I've got another one to show you. This is another piece. I've got one here and they're great in any color. I've got a couple of color waves here. This would be pretty as well. So on this piece, I kept the two dimensional look like I did on the first pieces that I showed you, but then I added a little three dimensional piece to it. Turned out very pretty. I also did some color work and a little bit of that painting in of the triple thick and then a little spritz of glitter on the pieces. Really makes the piece look beautiful and they are so pretty on a Christmas tree. Now I'm going to bring something else over. These images are snowflake images. Let me set this down for a minute and I want to move some of these other pieces away so you can get a nice clear view of this. So I've got the snowflake images. And the easiest way to work with these pieces would be to take one of these foam pieces. I just poke it out with, whoops, <laughs> just poke it out. And then I would take the paper off the edge Put this piece up here and create an ornament. I've got a piece that I will bring over and show you and it's the same design but I did it in a different color and this is the one that I did in this colorway and I thought it was really pretty. I'm going to put another paper behind it. I think it'll be easier for you to see and obviously you can see that I added some jewels to the piece. I think it turned out really pretty. Put a little bit of a cord on it and it hangs very, very nicely on a tree. Very pretty piece. Let me show you another piece that I did. And I'm still using this layering technique. I've done it as a package topper and I've used the snowflake design a different snowflake than this one and I've used one two three all three sizes and I put the foam in between and this I had fun with after I embossed it and got it all fussy cut uh, and layered it up I took some of the triple thick and I washed over each piece and then sprinkled a little bit of glitter on it and I think it makes just a beautiful package topper. It would be a pretty ornament as well. Speaking of package toppers, let me bring another over. The paper for these boxes is so pretty too. This one, okay, keeping the first piece as a two-dimensional piece, the second piece two-dimensional, layering it on top with the foam in between. And I took one of my butterflies and this is very pretty. I added some jewels to it, some gems. And what I did on this piece, I wanted to make it a little more substantial. So this piece I just painted with the triple thick. Now you could use Mod Podge as well if you have that and just paint it over. And that will help the wings uh, stay up as well. A lot of my images come in three sizes. Here I go, let me get this one. 
one, two, three different sizes. Easiest way to work with these is to just stack them up. Whether you fussy cut the edges or just clear cut the edges, however you choose to do it. But another way to start working with my stamps is to make some cuts. And as I mentioned uh, on my website, and when you look at the dimensional stamps, there are directions for cuts. And there were also some directions on that first video. So I might make my cuts coming down on either side here. I would just take and cut to this point and cut to this point. It's always about the V's and the mountains. And there are some little mountains or V's. Some little mountains and V's in here and I'm just cutting through that and then I am pushing edges up and when I do that I'm able to dimensionalize the piece make it a three-dimensional piece and I've got a package topper right here that I've done that way and I've used the image in three different sizes again one two three and as you can see I alternated the color I thought this was a pretty package for Christmas um, and I've got the foam tabs in between that's allowing enough space for these little edges to pop up. Earlier I started showing you how you could bend these pieces forward and I said we would just bend the twiggies forward. Okay and I will go around the whole piece and I'll show you a piece that I did this way. I think it really turned out pretty. So this one, I pulled all the twiggies forward. Can you see the depth and dimension on it? And I did two sides. So what I did was the large image, I stamped two of the middle size image, two of it, and the tiny image, two of that one. And then I did my cutting and pulled the twiggies forward which left the hearts behind and so I was able to take the heart pieces and glue them together to create a ornament that was dimensional on all sides. I thought that turned out really really pretty. Another piece that I did pulling twiggies forward was this piece. The gold just seems to be pretty for holiday. Uh, and I used the small dimensional stamp here. And as you can see, I didn't make cuts in it. I just kept it flat or, or two-dimensional rather than three-dimensionalizing it. I think this turned out so pretty. And it's a beautiful package top, and it's also a very beautiful ornament. I did another, and instead of pulling the twiggies forward, I pulled the hearts forward. Let me move this red out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. I think this is a very dramatic piece. So I pulled all the hearts forward. I came in with some stickles and just put a little dab of glitz into the piece, all around the piece. I did the tiny piece. I'm only using the largest and the smallest image on this. And a little jewel in the center and then the cord I think that turned out beautiful. I'm going to show you another one in a different color way. I've done it the same way. In both of these pieces, you might notice, I did not do the fancy cutting on or the fussy cutting on. I just had cut everything out just straight around and then did my other cuts. Came back in again with uh, not stickles this time. I used the liquid pearls. Then I did a nice gem in the middle. I used all three sizes on this one, where on this one I had only used two sizes. This was one of my very favorite package toppers. I'd love to get this package. And I've used the design, the three different sizes. I embossed it in silver and I pulled all of the hearts forward. I added a little bit of ribbon. I did another one that I had fun with, and it's this piece. Let me turn it a little bit for you. 
And basically I did it the same way as I did the last one. Both of them were fussy cut. When I did this piece, I was looking at another piece that I did that wasn't a fussy cut piece. It was this little piece. And I thought, wow, that's really pretty. And that would be fun on this package with this paper. So I took it and I just laid it up here. I thought it was dynamite. What do you think? When you look at my website, creativeartsbyoberton.com, this is what you'll see. You'll see images like this, and I've stamped these out, and here they are. And on the website, it will show you how to make some cuts. So I've got one here that I'm going to just show you very quickly how to make some cuts. So I'm just going to take this one, and I just cut in on the side of this piece around I'm going to cut in cut in see it's quite simple just cut in and I could raise these small parts if I wanted to but I think it's much prettier if I raise the heart part so I would raise these parts up and be able to create something very pretty from this. And I've got a sample that I'll bring over and show you. So I did it as a box topper. So while we have this piece out, we used it earlier on a large flat ornament that was gorgeous that I did a little dimensional piece in the middle. Got another part. It's in the same colorway. And I thought it was interesting. I'd have to get it centered up and placed where I wanted it. But it's very interesting as well. Sometimes I like to make cookies and give them to friends for the holidays. Or put some little candies in a tin. And I thought doing the package toppers would be really pretty. What would we call these? Tin toppers? I think that's a great idea. So that would be a gift. The cookies or the candy treats, whatever, would be a great gift. But how about a surprise, another gift here? Look at this. Look what I've done. I've actually created a magnetic piece. So this can be used on the fridge later. Right now, it's pretty on the package. This is another one. Okay. I'm going to move these out of my area and I'm going to come back in with another piece and this is another little piece that I did. Let me move the red out so you can see it a little better and this is one of the pieces that I used the contact paper over to make it more substantial. I thought if this went on the fridge or any of them go on the fridge it's being handled a lot this is really going to be a nice protective layer. These ornaments have such a different look than the others. This large one is gorgeous and I've done a second image on top. And it's all been dimensionalized and I've been using the technique with the V's and the mountains for creating these images. I wanted you to see that you could do a small ornament. They don't all have to be big. Remember earlier when I said I like some fancy paper on my tray? I've got a little fancy paper. And I've used some of this fancy paper behind the ornament. It shows through very nicely. I hope you're having fun watching this video. And I hope you can appreciate the fun you can have with the dimensional stamps. Whether you fussy cut or you just cut around whether you use rubber nature tool stamps or you emboss and use colored paper no matter what you do i hope you're having fun with them now i want to show you a couple more things that i think are really fun so i've taken one of my square dimensionals and i've just simply taken it and folded the sides in on it like this i've created a little envelope 
that I could put a little card in for someone. My Rubber Nature Square Stamps fit perfectly in these envelopes. You can find them on my website, creativeartsbyoberton.com. This one I've done here is a little cat, and it's for a friend who loves cats. I'm going to show you another example. It's very pretty. A little gift. Uh, so I've made the envelope. When you fold everything in, I like to take and put a little bit of tape underneath so everything sticks together, that envelope stays together. And I've got a little card. Maybe I'll put some birthday wishes in this one for someone. Another way to work with the square dimensionals is to create a place card. So what I've done with this, let me unfold it for a quick minute, is I've taken my image, stamped it all out, and then I've used my knife, and you can see I've cut just half, okay, around half of it, and fold it up, and I've got a place card. And I can fancy this up a bit by just taking one of my other images, putting it on here, but then how are we going to know whose place it is? Just take a strip of paper here and put it in, and you can write the name right on that. So you can use these little place cards for all kinds of occasions. I thought this was really pretty. But I thought I'd use it as a table decoration, so I created it the way I just showed you, folding it up, and I put a fancy embellishment on it. I think it's gorgeous. Another way that we can create a place card would be to take the square dimensional and fold the edges in just like I did when I was making the envelope and then put a fancy piece on it. Please browse my Fundimensional Stamp Gallery complete with rubber stamp information. I've included some additional mix and match samples and a special thank you for my cameraman, Mr. O. You've probably guessed I love designing and working with unique rubber stamps. I hope you enjoyed my Fundimensionals video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share my videos with friends.